the one thing most needful, please consider carefully. Please know, my friends, this which I now share was birthed in much pain, trials, tribulation, and overcoming. The last two years, and especially the last four months, have been the most painful and trying of my life. God knows. God knows what it's taken. I won't go into the details, but it involved the deterioration of my dear and godly wife's mental, emotional, and physical condition, including congestive heart failure, blood infections, urinary blockage, renal failure, and sepsis infection, leading to brain shrinkage and creeping dementia. August through October of this year was especially intense and difficult to say the least, including a hospitalization for a medical emergency of my own in early November following her memorial services and burial service. Yet through all this intense hardship and trying ordeal, I can see how God used it to show me this. One, the importance of overcoming in the midst of trials. Two, how much we are truly dependent upon God to press on and overcome. And most of all, three, birthing this enormously important insight for the church worldwide, the one thing most needful. And what would that be, my friend? The one thing most needful is the need, the desperate need worldwide among the churches and Christians, the desperate need for prevailing travailing worship and prayer and this happening within informal meetings in homes and in churches i mean at least once or more weekly sustained two and three hours of worship and prayer and crying out to god something that is sorely and badly lacking almost entirely in most churches and home fellowship groups. You know it's the truth. Please hear me on this. What do I mean by two and three hours of sustained and prevailing worship and prayer? Just this. Anyone with any awareness or discernment at all can plainly see the apostasy in many churches, the powerlessness in many churches, and the shocking deterioration of moral values and moral behavior throughout all the world, including the abortion murder holocaust and gay pride and homosexual marriage. Furthermore, there is accelerating violence and distress and perplexity of nations. This is everywhere today. The signs of the times are everywhere. See 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and Romans 1, 18 through 32. Check it out. Am I right? Look around. I know that I know that I know that I am right on this. Something this obvious was birthed, I can tell you, through pain and suffering and much overcoming. So much so that I don't want to go into the details, but it was enormously painful on all three levels, mental, emotional, and physical. Please check it out. All this that I speak of now is in full swing. The apostasy, the great falling away, 
is in full throttle throughout all the earth. And most of the church and churches are prayerless and almost clueless about it all. Instead, it is simply business as usual. Not good. Not good. I can tell you honestly, in fact, it is a spiritual disaster. And God is not pleased. So then, here is what God has strongly impressed upon me to, de to declare and to do. A minimum of two to three hours of sustained worship and prayer every Saturday Shabbat, seventh day, in the afternoons, from 1 to 5 or 6 p.m., every Shabbat. Most of the worship prayer worship prayer time is between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. here in our home. This meeting is in the home. It is informal as a family and by invitation only to burdened pastors, prayer warriors, and true worshipers. Here are the scriptures that clearly apply to all this. Scripture says the fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. The fervent prayer. And for when two or three or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And God must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. For the Father is searching throughout the earth for true worshippers and for those who will stand in the gap in a day such as this. The meetings we have had so far, God has truly honored wonderfully with his refreshing presence and confirming over and over just how needful such meetings are among Christians in this late late prophetic hour in these perilous times. Truly perilous times. The anointing, my friends and my brethren, the anointing comes via worship and prevailing prayer. Period. You can't get around this. Period. Especially corporate prevailing prayer as on the day of Pentecost as on the day of Pentecost and the birthing of the spirit filled church ecclesia the called out ones the body of the assembled elect I am not exaggerating in this everything of vital importance begins with fervent God-seeking, God-honoring worship. This is something that cannot be skipped over or ignored. Please hear me. This is something that we cannot skip over or ignore. We begin our worship prayer time in my home, in our home, with a playlist that I've put together from my laptop and audio system. Beginning with the shofar blast, then anointed worship songs, like more love, more power, more of you in my life. The absolute best and most anointed worship that you can find on the internet and download it on a playlist. Then we are singing choruses like, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. And I worship you, Almighty Yahweh, there is none like you. Then, after this, Prayer and more prayer and back into worship again. At least two to three hours of this sustained. No interruptions. Everyone is encouraged and allowed to pray. Everyone. Usually going around in a circle for the sake of order. I can tell you without hesitation that such worship and prayer 
sends darkness and demons screaming and fleeing in seven different directions when it's really done right. That this kind of worship and prayer sends darkness and demons screaming and fleeing in seven different directions like nothing else. Like nothing else, it brings the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and the holy angels into our midst. I am not exaggerating. This is the way it's supposed to be. There is nothing that compares with it for personal edification, times of refreshing, and the great, great need for prevailing prayer for all the needs and burdens that need to be brought before the Lord God, Jehovah. The Lord God Almighty, He needs to hear our prayers on these things, including a revival of holiness and pulling down strongholds of the enemy, strongholds of the enemy in churches and many lives and families. So here is my counsel and exhortation. Do it. Do it. Start now. Do not delay. Find at least two or three like-minded prayer, burdened prayer warriors. And meet on Shabbat afternoons or any available afternoon for that matter. And start doing just as soon as you possibly can. Start doing this most needful thing in the churches and in the homes. Let me say also, if you have no burden to do this, and you are just too busy to get involved in something like this, then you are among the two lukewarm who are not hearing from God and what is most needful. I tell you very honestly and boldly, Thus saith the Lord Yeshua, the one thing most needful in lives and in churches is prevailing worship and prayer in this very, very late, dark and prophetic hour when the world is literally falling apart and the churches are mostly powerless and prayerless. I know this is true. Now what are you going to do with this truth? I leave that between you and God the Father, who very, very clearly impressed this upon me, to both do it and declare it. I pray God motivates and raises up fervent, prevailing home prayer worship groups, such as I have described right here, and that he had raised them up throughout the Philippines and the nations. He will speak to a remnant, my friends. Listen to me carefully. He will speak to a remnant, but a solid remnant is all God has ever needed. For you see, he knows full well that most are asleep and lukewarm and even resistant to such an idea as I've just told you.